Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Let me start off by saying I'm sorry. I broke I broke meta. It was all my fault. I admit it. I committed some code, forgot a semicolon, and yeah, the whole outage. It was just me, I swear. Uh, no, uh, but I feel really, really, like I have like anxiety for the person or people who made that mistake and broke everything because I can just, I can feel what they're probably going through right now. So, uh, but it's not me, thankfully. <laughs> uh, good afternoon again. I am Raymond Camden. Welcome to the third episode of Code Break. Definitely going to be in the top three of my episodes. And if you have been to all three, you know I've repeated that lame joke every single time. And I would love to tell you that I'm not going to repeat that joke, but my kids will tell you that I, I once I get a joke in mind, uh, I keep doing it. Uh, yes, uh, Alberto Reyes. Yes, this is live. I am, I am right now live doing this. Um, yes, <laughs> I don't know how else to say answer that. It's a very meta question, I guess, for me. Uh, so yes, this is definitely live, and uh, I uh, am going to get started. Um, but, oh, actually, no, before I get started. So last week, uh, I was happy to announce that Algolia, uh, that is a company that provides search as a API. Uh, I really like them. I use them on my personal blog for my search. They have a great API in SDKs and a really like stupid, generous free tier. Uh, they said that I could give away a prize to y'all. Unfortunately, um, I, I must have asked the wrong question because because nobody got it, um, which which makes me sad. But I really want to give away the prize today, so uh, I'm going to make this very simple. Like somebody has to win, and I have no idea how many people are out there, but I'm going to make it really really simple. Uh, it is 12 o'clock Central my time. I am assuming that you have had lunch or you're eating lunch while watching this, tell me what you had or, or or are having for lunch. And the person who's having the most interesting lunch, you win the prize. I mean, that's as simple as it could be. Uh, if you're on the West Coast and you're just kind of maybe just waking up, I'm happy with you sharing breakfast. That's fine as well. Uh, just share in a comment and the first one I get or the or the most interesting one that I get, uh, you will be the winner. And I know I have at least two people watching. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I kind of like this breakfast sandwich with tater tots. Uh, tater tots are exceptionally good. Uh, Dennis had a hamburger with a conglomerate of root veggies on the side so you get you get points for a healthy-ish breakfast and you get points for conglomerate uh my good buddy scott stroh's pizza can never go wrong with that uh henry um it's just a prize from algolia uh it's gonna be a piece of swag essentially but uh i basically i asked them like hey can i give away crap on my show and they were like heck yeah ray we love you uh so henry yes uh Basically, if you are the winner, I'm going to ask you to email me and I'll hook y'all up and they'll ship you a uh, million dollars or a piece of swag. It's definitely going to be one of those. Uh, Montasser, drunken noodles from a Thai place. That sounds really, really yummy. By the way, I'm kind of shocked how many people are actually attending. Thank you. <laughs> Making my ego a little better here. Uh, Steven, cottage cheese of green olives, everything bagels, seasoning, and chili roasted pistachios. Uh, again, healthy. That's pretty good. Henry, kale with rice. Listen, y'all are making me feel bad that I am not eating as healthy as y'all. Um, cool. Well, I've got a bunch of y'all responding. And you know what? I think Dennis, <laughs> just because of... Uh, I think just because of conglomerate, <laughs> just for bringing out that $1 word there, uh, you you win. So congratulations. 
Uh, Dennis, uh, drop me an email. I'm posting in comments right now what my e yeah, if I could type what my email address is. Raymondcam at gmail.com. Uh, just reach out to me and I will hook you up with the right people uh, for your prize. And again, congrats. All right, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Can I talk about what we're going to do? Let me move this over here. Home saw like that. Uh, there we go. All right. So by the way, I, I will point out, as you can see on screen here, this is what I'm going through right now. Uh, so if you hear, oh, I always forget to turn off. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, no. This is what I'm going through right now. Uh, I live in Louisiana, and we love to have storms. And so if you hear loud booming outside, that's why. If I scream like a small child, that is why. Uh, I am definitely afraid of lightning and storms. I will not deny that at all. Uh, but hopefully, uh, we have a whole home generator. Hopefully, even if we lose power, uh, I will stay online in some way uh, at all. So I want to talk today about Alpine JS, uh, specifically, you know, why I've been digging it a lot lately and um, why why it makes me happy. Uh, I was a Vue.js person for for many, many, many years, actually. I've written a couple books, or I should say I've co-written um, a couple of books on it, and I used to present on it a lot. And when Vue 3 came about, uh, it got like a lot more serious and a lot more uh, powerful and still as great as it ever was. But I felt like Vue wasn't necessarily as practical for progressive enhancement. And that is my way of saying I have a web page and I need some interactivity. I'm not building Gmail. I can come on. None of us are building Gmail, but you know, I I don't need an application. I just need additional interactivity. And I felt like, especially with Vue three, that it wasn't necessarily appropriate. And that's a hundred percent personal opinion. Um, but I kind of stopped using Vue and kind of focused more on vanilla type stuff, uh, vanilla JavaScript. And I attended a conference, and the only reason I went into this particular session was because I knew the speaker. And um, sorry, I keep looking at the comments, making, making sure I'm not missing anything. I attended this session because I knew the speaker, and it was on Alpine JS. And I'm watching him present it. Everything is clicking with me, like, oh, this is what I've been looking for in terms of, you know, essentially. I look at Alpine JS as like a modern jQuery. You know, if you were to build something like jQuery now, kind of a general tool belt, uh, Swiss Army knife of, I'm going to help you do some of the common things that you do all the time and make it easy for you. And that's it. Alpine really, really feels uh, like it's a great, uh, a great replacement for jQuery or a great, uh, a great thing just to add to your tool set. Uh, so I've been using it a lot lately. I still kind of hesitate when I'm building something between do I need any framework at all or just straight JavaScript. And I think your default should always be to start simple, to have as few dependencies as possible. Uh, you know, keep it simple, stupid, basically. You should strive for them. Uh, but when I start looking at something and thinking, you know, I'm going to have a lot of DOM, uh, DOM manipulation and it's slightly more complex than this like, incredibly simple page, that's when I start looking at Alpine. Now, uh, when I when I proposed this particular stream idea to, to Brian uh, and Certified Fresh Events, what I wanted was like a, a, a building type thing. Like I... I have done and I love to do the presentation where for an hour I give you lame jokes and cat pictures and introduce you to something X. Like I, I love to do that, but I really wanted this session to be focused on me writing code. Last week, uh, I showed you how to build an incredibly simple game. 
And I avoided Alpine, even though it would have been perfect for it because I didn't want to throw two things at you at once. You know, last session I was kind of talking about uh, basic, super basic uh, game theory and managing state and, and stuff like that. I didn't want to throw Alpine in, in there as, with you. So I decided this week what I would do is I would take that game that we built last week and just kind of rewrite it using Alpine. Now, with me saying that, you know, I don't necessarily want to teach you Alpine JS. I don't want this to be a presentation style of me talking for an hour of slides and all that. I want to give you the basics of Alpine JS. Uh, and by the way, website is alpinejs.dev if you want to learn more. I want to give you the uh, basics of it in five minutes. Now, that is a bit crazy. But I'm going to try it, and y'all can see how well I do. Probably not very well at all. Uh, I was going to use a timer, but then I would have anxiety throughout the entire thing. So instead, we'll do a stopwatch. And we are going to go into a basic code pen, and I'm going to teach you the basics there. And let me get rid of the CSS, get a bit more HTML. And y'all tell me if that is too small to read. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit start, and then I'm going to teach you uh, Alpine in five minutes. Obviously, not every aspect of it, but hopefully enough to get you excited. All right, so I would love to know how many of y'all think I could do this, but let's go now. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, and by the way, I am copying and pasting a little bit to save me more typing, is I'm going to drop in the Alpine JS CDN link. Great. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add two div tags. Alpine is a bit like Vue in the case where you need to tell it, this is the area that I'm working in. So I could have, you know, random HTML up here, random HTML blah, blah, up here, and more down below. But I need to specify, hey, Alpine, this is the area that you're going to work with. And I'm going to do that with a X data tag. Now, inside of here, I am literally going to start writing key value pairs. So I'm going to say first name is Raymond, last name equals Camden. And what I have done is just define two variables for my Alpine, Alpine JS application. How do I use it? I can add a span tag and give it an X text attribute, point to the variable, close the end tag like that, and copy and paste. And code pin, don't let me down last name, and bam, this should give me, unless I screwed up already, oh, I did, actually, sorry. It should be an object of key value pairs. Home solid like that, boom, binding. So I now have created two variables and I bound them inside of uh, my data and rendered it. I could also do uh, computed methods or getter methods. So I'm gonna say get full name and I'm going to spell git correctly. And we will say return this dot first name. This is how methods can refer to variables within the application. Last name. And then I will just add full name span x text. And again, if you're used to uh, Vue.js, then you will know this as computed methods like that. Bam. So that's two Alpine or probably three or so Alpine JS features. Let's do a few quick more. I will set a value, a, a Boolean value is cool to true. I am very cool. My kids will tell you that. Conditionals are done two ways with an X if or an X show. FX will X if <laughs> will add or remove from the DOM. X show will use CSS to hide something. I'm going to use X show and just say, if this cool, I'm so cool. In theory, that should show up. And if I set cool to false, it should go away. All right. How about looping? I have some hobbies. They are books, video games, and cats. It's a little simple array here. And then I'm going to iterate over that. I'm going to drop that in a UL first. And the way that you will iterate in Alpine is use a template tag, x4, hobby, and hobbies. 
close the template, type correctly, li x x equals hobby, and bam, I should now have looping. All right, how about two-way binding? Really, really difficult. First name, input, x model equals first name, br, and I will repeat that for last name, and we should have it all. Let's make sure it refreshes. Now, if I type in here, you can see I have binding. So I have shown you how to define variables, how to do conditionals, how to do looping, how to do uh, uh, two-way binding. By the way, if, this, all, if all this junk here makes you wig out, you're absolutely correct. Uh, I do not do this. Instead, what I use is a little bit of JavaScript where instead I will say xdata equals app, and that should work. I'll accept that I removed all my code, but uh, if I were to put that in script, then that is how I would do it. And did I do it? Oh, I did it. You know, I have 30 seconds left. So let's just bring this in here. I'm saw like that. Forgive my verbal indentation and work perfect and 15 seconds left so i'll go crazy and actually show you changing data and let copen refresh and there you go so stop i am uh i am blown away <laughs> that i did all that so obviously uh there is a lot actually there really isn't a lot more uh their documentation is pretty much one page uh, and there'll be a lot of X dash stuff for doing things, but I pretty much covered everything uh, that you can do. So in theory, you know enough now to be dangerous, which is the best state to be in. So let's talk about rebuilding that previous game in Alpine. Now, before we rebuild, let's actually open up the previous game just so that we could be reminded on it. So I'm going to go into play a game one. I'm going to start a little web server. And that should open up. Open up. There we go. All right. So uh, if y'all were not in my last session, uh, I built a simple game of uh, rock, paper, scissors. It has two states. This is like the, the home state um, where I show the instructions. If you hit start game and then it prompts you to play. So I will pick paper and it tells me that the computer did scissors and I lost. I also have a counter for how many games. Let me make this a little bit bigger for y'all. I apologize. By the way, definitely uh, speak up uh, if you can't see what I have on screen here. But I can keep playing this and as I play, I get an updated um, set of stats based on how I'm doing and how many games I have won. And apparently I am really bad at rock, paper, scissors. I feel like I should be at least close to 50%. Let's take a look at the code. Just so we could see it's a bit more in case we weren't here last time. So the HTML, uh, I used two divs, uh, one for the entry state, you know, kind of uh, the instructions another one for the actual game. And you can see I have my UI here where I'm asking you to pick one and then an empty P tag for the outcome. The JavaScript was relatively simple. Uh, I have an event listener for my DOM content loading, uh, loaded. And then when I do that, I do things like listen for the button to start the game uh, I get a pointer to that result div because I'm going to be using it a lot. Uh, and then I start letting you play. And basically the logic was, you know, uh, I take what you pick. Uh, the computer picks one of three options. And then based on that logic, uh, I update the result. And you can see there I'm creating an inner HTML string. I'm writing my HTML out and all that. Uh, and then rendering it um, out to the page. So this is definitely not terribly complex. Uh, 58 lines of JavaScript and some more HTML. So let's go crazy. 
and we will do make play a game two. We will go into play a game two, and I'm going to make a new file index.html. And for the heck of it, I'm going to copy and paste uh, what I had from the original. I'm definitely going to be modifying this a bit. And let's actually start a web server here and make that a bit smaller and comb saw like that. I'm not going to worry about the CSS. You know, actually, I will worry about the CSS. That's one thing I don't have to change in this version. I can just take what I had before. Although, you know what? I am not going to need that. So I'm going to leave that out for now. And I'll explain why in a little bit. So I have all of this, the HTML from before. Now let's actually start adding in Alpine. So I'm going to come in and I am going to add my CDN. And I will just copy and paste right from the code pen. And I'm actually going to add a blank app.js. So in theory, nothing is going to work. And if I go back to my rock, paper, scissors and reload, actually go in here. I should see it broken, which is what I expect. Let's go and preemptively open up uh, our dev console. And this is exactly what I expected. So I have no functionality at all. Uh, both states are showing up, uh, but I have loaded in Alpine and I could start working with it. Now I know I showed it very, very quick at the end, but typically, this is how I will start every application. Let me get rid of this with this set of code here. So I have an event listener for Alpine init. And then I'm saying that I'm going to create an Alpine application named app and then start doing stuff with that. I'm going to go back into my index HTML. And for the heck of it, I'm going to wrap everything X data equals app with one big div. And I may regret that decision later, but I just kind of want to see things working. And if I save this, it should still look the same because I haven't actually done anything yet, but I want to make sure I don't have any like dumb errors or anything. And at least not yet, no errors. All right. So First thing I probably want to do is handle the fact that when the game starts, you should only see one of two states. So I'm going to do a couple of different things here. The first thing I'm going to do is quickly show you a Alpine feature that's very much like Vue.js, where if I add X cloak to my wrapper div and define that as display none, what's going to happen is that Alpine when it loads, it will remove that. And that way I won't get like the uh, the FUOC, the flash of unaltered, unupdated, et cetera, content. Uh, but again, if you use Vue.js, this is gonna be the exact same type con uh, concept. Next thing I wanna do is I, I want the ability to show and hide these two uh, states. Previously, I used a class and an ID so I can inspect them and work with that. I don't necessarily need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove both of those. And instead, I'm going to use X show. And we'll say intro state. So this will show if intro state is true. So I will go in here and set intro state to true. And then I want to hide this if intro state is false. Now, one thing that Alpine um, doesn't have that Vue.js does have is a else type directive. So I am instead, I'm going to use not intro state. So in theory, <laughs> I should not see any kind of um, content at all while Alpine is loading. When it does load, it will check the value of intro state and will show the first div and not the second. Please don't let me screw up this early in development. All right. I wasn't worried at all, I swear. 
and just seeing if I have any comments about that yet. Yeah, by the way, uh, if, if I show anything weird or if you have any questions, please just let me know. I am checking over here on the comments to see uh, what you may be asking. All right. So the next thing we need to do is when I click start game, it should toggle states. Now, in that quick five minute intro, one of the features I skipped over was event handling. But I will show you how that works. Here's my button for start game. Uh, the ID was there so I could reference it in my, you know, in my vanilla JavaScript. Instead, I'm going to use X on click equals start game. I'm pretty sure I don't need the parents there, but we'll see. So Exxon is basically how you do event handling in Alpine JS. You give it the colon and then the event that you care about. Uh, it also supports certain modifiers like prevent default and even things like once. Because event handling is so common, the shortcut is the at, is the, um, the at symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and define start game. So start game. And just to make sure it's working correctly, I will say start game clicked, save it, reload, and here goes nothing. Sweet, I didn't break it so far. I am a big believer in taking baby steps. So you will, if you keep attending these sessions, you'll see me do things where I'll add a method and all I do is a console message just to make sure that it's working. So the idea here was to uh, hide the intro and show the game. And we're going to do more here. But for now, I'll just say this dot intro state equals false. And in theory, I'll reload, drink some water. Bam. Done. So easy. All right. So the next thing that I needed uh, was an event handler for this. Uh, for these buttons uh, to handle, you know, figuring out uh, if you won or not. I'm going to go back to my HTML. And I'm going to get rid of that class and just add event handlers. And we will call it uh, user picked. It's not the best name. Uh, hand thrown. Um, I honestly can't think of a great name for this. Or how about this? Player player picked. All right. So I'm going to repeat this. So one, I will point out, uh, one thing that was maybe a little bit easier in the vanilla JavaScript was I did a query selector all and I got all those buttons. And then I added the event listeners to all of them by hand. I guess it's not that easier, uh, but maybe a little bit less typing. Uh, but I have the event handlers for these. And in theory, all I can do here, I'll go into player picked like that. We'll do console.log again. EP. I'm planning on removing that anyway. Reload, start game, and bam, that is running. And hopefully, Make that a little bit bigger for you all down there. Sweet. Now, I already wrote the, the game logic. So I'm not going to rewrite that uh, on screen. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to judiciously copy and paste from the last one. So first, let me get what the player chose. Now, in this case, uh, E target enter text to lowercase. We can do that in Alpine as well. And let me actually kind of copy that logic. So for event handlers, I am past an event object. So I should have access to it. And it's the exact same uh, as in a vanilla JavaScript application. So in theory, I want to make sure that this is working. Uh, but I should see rock, paper, or scissors. And you know what? Actually, no, okay, one thing at a time, Raymond. Don't try to be too smart. All right, reload, start game, scissors, paper, rock. Very good. Uh, so 
you're wondering why I did it to lowercase in the previous one. That was just to make the strings a little bit easier to work with. Uh, I can actually, nah, you know what I was thinking? You know what? I'm actually not sure what would happen here. Let's put this in and see what happens because I'm pretty sure still it's um, Alpine is still going to pass the event object, but uh, I think I could also pass custom uh, arguments as well. So for the heck of it, let's dump out all our arguments and let's see what happens. Reload, start game, and paper. And oh, I broke it. I broke it because it ends up being the second argument there. So in case you can't see it, uh, my custom argument was passed first. And Alpine just added the event object right after it. So in theory, I could say picked or chose. <laughs> and I don't even need the event object anymore. And I could just look at what they chose. I do use Alpine all the time. I do know this stuff. And it actually worked. Great. So, oh, absolutely, Scott. I will bring that up, especially with me not having a heck of a lot of code here. So that actually worked. I wasn't surprised at all. Scissors. So I like this better in Alpine already because it's a bit more obvious what's happening. And if we look at the JavaScript, um, I'm actually having to do less work now because I know immediately what they chose and even better, if I were to localize this game and use the French version of paper, papier, and three years of French in high school and college and is so gone. Uh, but if I had the French version of the paper in there, or if I wanted to get fancy and put some emoji in here to make it look better, in fact, you know what? I'm going to get fancy. By the way, I, you could tell uh, that Windows, when it opened up the emoji thing, it defaulted to wine, cats, and beers. So that, that says a lot about me. So we will do rock and a space. Not sure if there's one for paper. Oh, there is. All right. So I'm already making this so much better. Scissors like that. All right. So now it doesn't matter uh, what's in those buttons. The intertext can change to whatever. Uh, and I now have a more colorful uh, set of buttons. Oh, I love it. I'm going to sell this game for a million dollars. All right. So, again, I am going to go back uh, and kind of borrow logic from my previous version. So, if you remember here, I let my computer pick a random one from a constant. So, this is going to break. You know what? I will put this in. Player chose chose. Make this a little bit fancier. Player chose home saw like that. And I now need to make that option list. But you know what? I can just copy it like so. Uh, by the way, I could have option list in a Alpine JS uh, variable instead of a, I guess, global document variable. Uh, for my personal reasons, I, I feel like a constant value like this belongs on top, belongs external. I could have gone in here and defined an option list as well. So the next thing I need is get random it. Uh, uh, I'm gonna copy that function because it's so short. So in case you're curious, can I put get random it in my Alpine application? Yes, I could. And when I put it in, in there versus making it global, typically I'll keep everything inside of Alpine. Uh, I am trying to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, so I'm just going to copy and paste. Again, Alpine is flexible. I appreciate that. And let's see, PC, PC choice. All right, uh, so 
in theory now, I can pick something and the computer can pick something and I just want to log it both. And because I like taking baby steps, we're going to reload, start game and see what happened. And it's working correctly. I'll make that a little bit bigger again for y'all and make this a little bit higher and we'll clear. So I chose scissors, player chose paper. So the logic direct copy from Alpine. Basically I'm saying if you did wrong, I did paper, blah, 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 blah. And I have a result. I'm gonna copy and paste this right in. Now comes the fun part. Uh, in the previous game, I did a couple of things. I kept track of how many games you played, what your, uh, and how many you, that you won, what your percentage is. I'm going to add that, but I'm going to start off by just saying you chose X, uh, computer chose so-and-so, this is what happened. So this is the way I'm going to do that. I have that empty paragraph that I was just writing out HTML to. I'm going to get rid of that ID. I don't need it anymore. And instead, I'm going to say X text or X HTML equals result. Now, X HTML works the same as X text. It basically binds data from a uh, JavaScript variable into the DOM. XHTML is what you use when you want to include uh, HTML in there. Uh, Xtext is what you use when you know you don't have any HTML. I will also change this to a div. Now, this is going to look for a variable in Alpine scope called result. So I am not going to use this. I'm going to fix that in a second. But I will start off with a default string that's empty. What I want to do is basically, after I've done my logic, I want to write that out to the DOM. So I'm going to say, let this result, in other words, for this game, equals win. And we will set that variable again based on my paper, rock, scissors logic. And when I want to update the DOM now, I can literally go this dot result equals, and I want to use that string from the last game. I'm saw like that equals. Oops, let me get my multi line string in there. So this is what I chose. Uh, I'm sorry, what I chose, that's what the computer chose. And in theory, this will update the DOM for us. Now, this is going to be something that we'll have to fix later for the next game, but we'll see that in a second. Save it, reload, and here goes nothing. Oh, I screwed up. That's fine. Result is not defined. Okay. So let's see. This dot result. I defined it there. Yeah, I have a result variable. And oh, yeah, I forgot to change this. So that will fix everything <clears throat> in theory. And sweet. The result for you is win. And in theory, I can keep going. And there we go. So Easy. <laughs> so now we need to add two things. We need to add the number of games that you played and how many you have won. So I will use the same variables I used before just because I, I feel like they had good names, games and one. So we will go in here, games zero, one, zero. And in here, we can quickly say games, I'm sorry, this.games. Because now I'm using an Alpine JS variable. Put one to it. And because I feel I don't feel like doing my math again. Go in here and say if this result was a win, then this dot one goes up one. 
let percentage one, because this is a local variable to my function, equals this dot one divided by this dot games. And in theory, I can copy and paste this. And we will see what happens. So games is an Alpine variable. One is an Alpine variable. Uh, percentage one is not it. I could probably have it there as well. Uh, but in theory now, this should add our tracking and reload, start game, and here goes nothing. Oh, what did I break? Oh, <laughs> T-I-H-S is not defined. You are right. Uh, those of you who saw that and did not warn me, I'm keeping a list of you. All right. So this dot one. Reload. Start game. And yes. And again, I am pretty darn bad at paper, rock, scissors. Sweet. All right. So <laughs> that was relatively quick. Uh, let me back up a little bit and to show you a couple things. So first off, uh, this code will be in the repository that I made for this show. And I don't have a link for it. Give me one second. I do. Okay. It is github.com CF Jedi Master Code Break. And let me use the fancy banner. So uh, if you want the code from this demo and the last demo, it is up <clears throat> on this particular repository. I will push it right now. Git status, git add play game two, git commit Alpine version, git push. <clears throat> and I don't know about y'all, but I kind of like reloading in GitHub and seeing stuff show up. And there we go. So uh, if you want this code, you can grab it from the repository and play with it. Another thing that I want to show you is that uh, at this very long, ugly URL, uh, I have a YouTube playlist on working with Alpine JS. It is how many of it? 14 videos, all relatively short, uh, that walks you through how to you know, play with it. I will copy this link in the comments. Let's see, there we go. <clears throat> And uh, you could try that out as well. Uh, on my blog too, uh, I'll say I have a tag, RaymondCamden.com tags AlpineJS. <clears throat> if you want to see my various fun little blog articles on working with AlpineJS, you can get it from there as well. So that is, let me switch. I saw my mouse in the, in the other, uh, window for a second, got totally confused. Uh, give me one second. I messed up something. All right. Okay, so <clears throat> first off, uh, thank you everybody who showed up. I really appreciate it. There's gonna be another one of these sessions in two weeks on Tuesday, again at 12. I'm not sure exactly what the session will be, but I have a list of topics. So I literally just need to pick one. Um, if you have any questions about this, reach out. I'm happy to answer anything you have. And for all of y'all who showed up, I greatly appreciate it, especially to my winner, uh, who was Dennis, I believe. Um, <clears throat> thank you for participating. Thank you, everybody. Y'all have a great rest of the day. Avoid the storms if you can. And uh, be safe. Thank you. Bye.